My friends, I promised we would get Ontario back on track. I ran on a commitment to restore accountability and trust. I promised to reduce the size and cost of government and end their culture of waste and mismanagement in government. This is something I fought for at City Hall, something I continue to believe in today, and no one has ever said to me, Doug, we need more politicians. In fact, it's the opposite. People tell me that we have too many politicians, making it harder to get things done, making it harder to get things built, making it harder to deal with the real problems we face, hours and hours of endless debate, and all of it taking place on the taxpayer's dime. My friends, it is clear that the size of government is just too large. This is particularly true at the municipal level. Here in the City of Toronto and the region, regional municipalities of GTA, it is time to reduce the size and cost of municipal governments, starting right here in Ontario. We will be introducing legislation that, if passed, will dramatically improve the decision-making process at Toronto City Hall. For too long, the people of Toronto have watched City Council go around and around and around in circles and fail to act on the critical issues facing the city. And as a result, infrastructure crumbles, housing backlogs grow, and transit isn't built as you see its total gridlock in this city. But it will only get worse if Toronto City Council grows from 44 to 47 councillors. More politicians is not the answer. No matter who the mayor is, and now more than ever, the City of Toronto needs to get some big things done. So we're going to streamline Toronto City Council. We're going to align Toronto with federal and provincial boundaries. Instead of 47 councillors, there'll be 25 councillors. To put things into perspective, the city of Los Angeles, with almost 14, 4 million people, I should say, has 15 city councillors. Toronto has 25 federal MPs, 25 provincial MPPs, 25 Toronto school trustees, 12 separate board, board school trustees, and we will have 25 Toronto City Councillors. And these new boundaries will be effective in time for the fall election. This meaningful change will dramatically improve the decision-making process at Toronto City Hall. It will make it easier to get things done. And our estimates show that having fewer politicians at City Hall will save Toronto taxpayers $25 million. And I think Toronto taxpayers will be happy to trade a bunch of politicians at City Hall for millions of dollars that can be reinvested in the city's pressing priorities. But we aren't stopping there. Our proposed legislation will put a pause on changes brought in by the Liberals in 2016 without any consultation to create a new layer of politicians. Elected regional chairs in York, Peel, Niagara, and Muskoka. The last thing the families, businesses, and municipal leaders in these regions need is another layer of politicians, another layer of dysfunction. So we're going to go back to the way it was before 2016. The other regional governments will continue to elect their representatives as normal, but in York, Peel, Niagara, and Muskoka, we're going to take a pause. We're going to take some time to figure out what layer of government is the best position to tackle the challenges we face. Because one thing every politician at every level and I'm in every region needs to remember is that we all share the same boss. We all work for the people. Steve, 
over to you, my friend. Thank you, Premier, and uh, thank, uh, thank you, everybody, for joining me. Uh, I know there's a lot of details here to digest, so uh, let me clarify a couple of points. First, we're going to take steps to be fair to the candidates running for Toronto City Council and the school board. First of all, our legislation, if passed, will extend the nomination period until September 14th. This new deadline will only apply to Toronto City Council and school board nominations, and it will only apply for the 2018 election. The municipal election date in Toronto will not be changing. It will remain October 22nd. And we will make it straightforward and simple for councillors to determine which, if any, of the new ward boundaries they want to run in. We'll also provide clear transition guidelines with regards to spending limits and reporting to ensure no candidate gets caught offside by those parts of the rules. We estimate that this one change will save Toronto taxpayers somewhere in the neighbourhood of $25 million. When it comes to the regional governments in York, Peel, Niagara and Muskoka, we are, as the Premier said, taking a pause. We're going to return to the appointed system that existed before 2016. The other more mature regional governments that were in place in Durham, Halton and Waterloo will not be impacted by these changes. But, we, but what we are going to do during this pause is take a long look at regional government across the province, where things have worked and where things haven't, to figure out what we can do better. We'll start this review informally in our discussions at the upcoming AMO conference, and we'll follow up with something more formal in the fall. I'll close by mentioning that both the Premier and I have backgrounds in municipal government. Premier Ford served on Toronto City Council, I was Mayor of Brockville. So it doesn't matter if you are in a rural or urban municipality, what you see time and time again is that the municipal level of government is the closest to the day-to-day -to -day lives of most people. This is another example of the province getting out of the way and making local government work harder, work smarter, and more effectively to make life better for everyone. Thank you. Looks like uh, questions. Premier, Premier, we just, Premier, we just had an election uh, on June seventh, and during the campaign, yep. you never once said that you were going to cut the size of council in Toronto or <laughs> cancel democratic elections in Peel, York, Niagara, and Muskoka. Why did you uh, keep that from voters? I mean, and now you're doing this unilaterally after the election. Well, I was pretty clear when I uh, ran, and I spoke to thousands and thousands of people across the GTA. I spoke to thousands of people in Toronto that we're going to reduce the size and cost of government. And I'll tell you, I didn't meet one person when I spoke to thousands of people that came up to me, not one, that came up to me and said, we want more politicians. As the city didn't consult with anyone and raised it up to 47 instead of 43, we have 25 MPs, 25 MPPs, 25 school trustees. Why do we need 47 councillors? Why didn't you campaign on that during the election? I, you, had a, you had a manifesto, you yeah. made tons of promises, and yet first days uh, in office, you're, going to, you're making this a priority and you didn't talk, tell voters that you were gonna do this. There, there isn't too many people that I know that wouldn't wanna trade in a bunch of politicians for $25 million until they could put that well, towards, well, towards the priorities. Well, very clearly I did. I, I was very clear when I said, we're gonna reduce the size of cost of government. I was down at City Hall for the four years I was there when we would take 10 hours to make a decision and then find out everyone voted together after 10 hours. It is the most dysfunctional political arena in the country, City Hall. The reason it's so dysfunctional, we have 44 people trying to make a decision that can't make a decision. They all have their own little interests, the 44 of them, and nothing gets done. Infrastructure is crumbling. Transit, we have gridlock all around the city. Housing has a billion dollar backlog because nothing is getting done. Nothing is getting done because they can't make decisions. Each and every one of you have been down at City Hall and sat there for hours and hours listening to them grandstand and talk when they should be getting things done. We're wasting millions of dollars in running an ineffective government. We need to run an efficient government for the taxpayers of the city. Yeah, Premier, you're the king of consultation so far. I mean, you've put Police Services Act uh, on, char on pause. You've uh, 
con focusing on the sex ed curriculum, uh, the sale of marijuana. There's been no consultation, real consultation on this. Is this simply a political grudge match against your old foes at City Hall and Patrick Brown? Well, actually, I'm, I'm glad you uh, asked me that question. Uh, I consulted with thousands of people right across the city, and every person I talked to said, you have to reduce the size of government. Nothing is getting done. Transit has not been built in 12 years. Under David Miller, never got built. Under Rob Ford, it wasn't able to be built because it was hijacked by too many councillors. Under John Tory, nothing has been built with transit. A shovel hasn't been in the ground. This is to help the next mayor, be it John Tory, and I look forward to working with him if he is the next mayor. But we have to run this more efficiently. We have to get the city moving. That's what people are frustrated about. People are frustrated about seeing 44 counselors go around and around and around. And as for counselors, my phone lit up like a light, like a, a, a Christmas tree last night. Every counselor I spoke to was way to go. This is long overdue. We can't wait for the changes. So the half a dozen counselors I spoke to last night were all gung ho for it. Not a grudge against John Tory and Patrick Brown. Why are you only targeting Toronto City Hall and not, for example, Ottawa or Kingston? Well, let, let's say Toronto uh, City Hall. I think it's the fifth or sixth largest budget uh, in the entire country. Well, it is. It is it's not. The biggest, it's the biggest city, though. It's the biggest city, and it's not running efficiently. I was down there. I know how it runs. And if each and every one of you were honest with yourselves. You would know, you've been down there, you have seen it. Matter of fact, the media themselves have come up to me and said, this is dysfunctional down here. The counselors themselves, no matter what side you're on, if you're on the left side, if you're in the center or the right side, every single one says it's dysfunctional at City Hall. The people that are complaining are gonna be politicians. And I can tell you, the people of Toronto, you ask them, do you want to trade in politicians for $25 million and making things run more efficiently? Or do you want a bunch of politicians to get no transit done, no infrastructure done, no housing done? That's what people care about. People don't care about politicians. They care about getting things done. And we've come to a screeching halt at the city of Toronto. Uh, Premier Ford, yes. I understand you and your brother want uh, talk on your initial show about the idea of holding a referendum about putting aside the council in half. And now Mayor John Tory is proposing that idea. Will you support mm -hmm. his referendum? And is there any way that could be done before you actually go ahead and decide to cut the council side of the council mm -hmm. in half to consult the people? What, what I support is making sure this government runs efficiently. What I support is getting infrastructure built. What I support is fixing the housing backlog. And what I support is stopping the gridlock. It takes me from Etobicoke down here over an hour. I can fly from Toronto to Chicago quicker than I can drive from the suburbs down to the city here. That's unacceptable. That's what people care about. I had a conversation with the mayor a week and a half, two weeks ago, and I can tell you one thing. I didn't see the reaction when I, I, I gave him this idea, uh, this proposal, uh, to the contrary. Not only did we speak to him once, we consulted numerous times our staff, and we never had this reaction. Matter of fact, deep down, and I'm not too sure where the mayor is going with this, he knows less politicians is good. It'll make his job a lot easier. He'll be able to get things done. All the politicians down there know it. The only politicians that are concerned are the ones that are going to lose their jobs. Well, the only question is about if you support his idea for a random. But to he says that he didn't think you were actually serious about <laughs> well, <laughs> how can you, <laughs> how can you, that's, that's actually comical. How can you not be serious when I told him we need to make the government run more efficiently? He agreed. And I truly believe the mayor believes he wants to run it more efficiently. And this isn't the mayor's fault because his hands are tied. He is frustrated, I can tell you that. I was frustrated. Rob Ford was frustrated. David Miller told me he was frustrated. The government was too big and it is too big. We're gonna make sure we run an efficient government. We're gonna deliver infrastructure, transit, housing to the people of Toronto. That's what they want. 
again, I think we were pretty clear uh, on the election. When I talked to thousands and thousands of people, the referendum was pretty clear. Our mandate was pretty clear, reduce the size and cost of government, put money back into the people's pocket, and get things done. People are tired of watching City Hall. It's like a comedy show down at City Hall. They go around and around and around. Nothing gets done. In the last election, I'll even, I'll even go this far. Rob Ford got elected, said he was going to build the Scarborough subway. Scarborough subway has been changed 10 times. 10 times. Rob Ford couldn't get transit done. John Tory promised Smart Track four years ago. There isn't a shovel in the ground. David Miller tried to get transit going. Nothing happened. We need to get the city moving. We can't afford another four years of gridlock in this city, infrastructure crumbling, and housing backlogs of over a billion dollars. Last question. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Travis Shannon, Global News. Um, where are you getting the $25 million figure from? Uh, and also, Ottawa City Council has 23 councillors, mm -hmm. which will be a very similar size now to what you're proposing in, in, in Toronto. And finally, uh, there is a lot of talk about legal challenges to this. Mm -hmm. Can you address that? Well, let, let's, let's not even compare Ottawa. It's apples and oranges. Uh, apples and oranges, when you compare uh, a town the size of Ottawa, a beautiful city, compared to a city the size of Toronto. You can't even compare it. You're looking at the, a city that's going to be eventually 3 million people. But I compare it to Los Angeles. I went there personally. I went through their city hall. And when I told the city councillors in Los Angeles, we had 44 councillors, and we had about 2.8 million people roughly. They looked at me like we had three heads. They have over 4 million people, a largest geographical area with 15 people. Good governance in any company says you should not have more than seven to nine people on the board. You could have 20 of the smartest people around the table. Nothing gets done. We're going to get things done. We're going to run City Hall a lot more efficiently than before. Thank you.